Hi, I'm Mr. Dio. I'm a chemistry teacher. Welcome to Mr. Dio Chemistry Laboratory. Uh, today we have a cool experiment. It has to do with burning candle. So our topic here is combustion. And we are talking about burning candle wax. All right, so there are different stages in this experiment. I want you to pay attention. And uh, you can ask yourself a bunch of questions before um, I even do the experiment. Like, what is combustion? What are some of the physical changes that will take place? What are some of the chemical changes that will take place? in this particular experiment, and at the very end, see if you were right. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna light a candle, all right, here we go. So we have a flame, you can see some fumes coming up. Okay, okay, okay. So we have a burning candle. I wanna make sure that the candle actually sticks to the inside of the pan. So I'm going to get a few drops of the liquid wax and uh, we'll get it stuck on the inside. Here we go. All right, so that's it. All right, so if you observe a little closely, you can see different parts of the flame, right? The majority of the flame tends to be orange in color. Uh, you can see a, uh, the wick is burning and it's turning dark in color, it's turning black and you can see melting of the candle. So you can see some physical changes occurring and of course we are burning the candle wax so therefore you, that's a chemical change because you, you're producing substances that were not there before. Alright, so I'm going to move ahead and do another portion of the experiment. <clears throat> now if I were to light a second candle, right, I have a birthday candle here, and I were to blow one of them out. Let's say I blow this one out. This one is a little tricky to do because I need to uh, get into the white vapor that comes out after you, you out a candle. But if I were to get into the white vapor itself, you will see that the vapor actually catches the fire. Let's try it one more time. And it burns very quickly, right? So it catches the fire because it's the vapor that actually catches the fire. It's not the liquid wax, it's not the solid wax, but it's actually the vapor, the candle vapor that actually burns. Okay? So let me out this. I'll put that away. And uh, I have a wire gauze. If you look on both sides, um, you don't see too much on it, right? It's a white wire gauze with a ceramic uh, piece in the middle, the center. Now if I were to bring this gauze all the way down on the flame, all the way down on the flame for a little bit without touching the candle, and I were to pick it up after a little bit, look what has happened. Something dramatic has happened. This will prove to you that in the whole combustion process that carbon black is produced. The symbol of carbon is C, and this is one form of carbon. There's graphite, there's diamond, there's buckminster, fullerene, and the fullerenes in general. But here's a clear proof of producing something that was not there before. We had the wick, we had a candle, and now we have a black substance being produced. And here is an evidence of a chemical change occurring in this uh, simple chemical reaction. All right? So that takes care of this. Now the next stage is I will pour some water into the dish and here I go, I'm pouring the water into the dish. And uh, I can cover the burning candle now. The burning candle is going to be covered uh, with a glass beaker, a 250 milliliter beaker. And let's see if anything will happen. Okay, the flame goes out after a little bit. And I can see the level of the water actually rising up inside of the beaker. It's a cool experiment to redo at any time. Uh, the water level comes up. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of things you can think about here to explain why the water level rises. One, it could be that you have used up the oxygen because of combustion. Uh, but don't forget that you're also producing carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a soluble gas, much more soluble gas than compared to oxygen. Another reason that you can give for the movement of the water upwards is that when the candle was lit, the flame actually heated up the air that's trapped inside of the beaker. 
and as, the flu as soon as the flame went out, uh, the temperature of the air actually dropped. So according to Charles' law, as temperature goes up, volume goes up. As temperature goes down, volume goes down. So nature doesn't like a vacuum to be created, so it sucks up the water to replace um, the vacuum that was created temporarily. All right, so that takes care of that situation. Now I want to show you that carbon dioxide is actually produced in this reaction. So I'm going to repeat this experiment. Here we go again. I'm going to like this one more time. I want to repeat this experiment. And I'm going to show you that carbon dioxide was produced. So here we go. I'm lighting. Okay, so it's going out. Let's try one more time. All right, so we got this. All right, so I got my match out, so that's pretty safe. Oh, I've lost my flame again. So let's try one more time. Okay, remember my wick was wet when I did my last experiment. Get rid of this. Try one more time. There we go. All right, seems to work this time. Let's hope it stays. All right, so we've got a flame, and I want to show you that combustion actually produces carbon dioxide. Okay? So we know that it produces. Um, it produces a carbon. So I'm going to cover with an Erlenmeyer flask. All right. So I want to show that carbon dioxide is actually here. So I'm going to use lime water. This is calcium hydroxide. I'll pour a little bit of calcium hydroxide in, and I will swirl. If there is carbon dioxide in here, Sufficient amount, we should see lime water turning cloudy. And I can see it turning cloudy. I hope you can see it on the camera. It is turning cloudy. Okay. So this is your test for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reacts with water and it becomes cloudy. Right, you can see that pretty clearly. So that's a proof of carbon dioxide being present in the burning candle. All right, so just a quick summary. So I lit the candle. Uh, we talked a little bit about physical and chemical changes. Um, we also examined the flame. We saw that the flame was mostly of an orange color, but it was a little bit of blue. Um, so you'll have to know the different parts of a flame. And uh, I showed you what happened with the wire gauze. Carbon was produced in the reaction carbon black, which is used to make inks as well as shoe polish. And uh, <clears throat> then we did a combustion um, and then covering the candle with a beaker. And I showed you that uh, the candle flame went out. Then I was able to repeat the experiment. I collected the gas produced at the burning candle. I used lime water, calcium hydroxide solution. And I showed you it turns cloudy, which proves that carbon dioxide is present.